This video is on solving percent problems. All right, before we start talking about our percent problems, in any percent problem, you have a part and you have a whole, and it's important that you know the difference. So let's take a look at some of these examples and figure out which is which, okay? So looking at that green example, we have all the kids in the school, and then we have the kids who play basketball. So which is the part, which is the whole? The whole would be all kids in the school. That's a whole school. Part would be the kids who play basketball. So that's part of the whole school, okay? The part is part of the whole, right? Not the other way around. All right, looking at the blue one, we got the number of days it rains and all days in the year. So think about what you think is which. Hopefully you said the whole was all the days in the year and the part was the number of days it rains, okay? Because that would be included in the whole. The part is always included in the whole. All right, the red one, the total bill and the amount of tax, which is which? The whole is the total bill, and then tax is part of that bill. So that's the part, that's the whole. Then we have the total number of points, and then how many points you scored, okay? So our whole is the total number of points, and the part is the part you scored. So hopefully that's really obvious. Um, it's going to make it easier if you are able to easily tell which is the part and which is the whole in a word problem. All right, so there's two different ways I'm going to show you about doing percent problems. The first one is setting up an equation. Okay, The way you set it up is that you have to turn any percents into their decimal form. They are multiplied by the whole. So you have to decide what the whole is. And they end up equaling the part. Okay, and there's some keywords that tell you what is what. Now, obviously, a percent is telling you it's the percent, so that one's pretty easy. If you see the word of, we know it means multiply. It means you're multiplying the whole, right? So that's going to tell you what the whole number is. The number after the of is the whole number. And then we know is means equals, so is is going to represent the part because it equals the part, okay? And anytime you see what, that's the variable. That's telling you what you're looking for. All right, so let's look at an example of this. So we got, what is 20% of 25, okay? So we have our percent is obviously 20, and we got to turn that into a decimal, so that'd be 0 0.2. It says of 25, so that's my whole. And I'm looking for what is, so I'm looking for the part, okay? So I have, according to my equation up here, my percent in decimal form, times the whole, which I said was 25, equals the part, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's how I would set it up to solve. Okay, and then you just multiply it out, see what you get. So x equals 5 in this case. Okay, all right, next one. We got 30 is, so remember is represents our part. 45% turn it into a decimal. And then of what number, that's our whole that we're looking for. So this time we have 0.45 times my variable, because I don't know what the whole is, equals my part of 30. Okay, so in this case I'm going to have to solve for x. I do this to both sides. So it ends up being 30 divided by 0.45. 30 divided by 0.45. I get 66.6 repeating is my whole. Okay? And my last example of this, I got 14 is, so there's my part, what percent, so I'm looking for my percent, of 77 is my whole. All right, so when I set up my proportion, extend my page a little, there we go. So I got x is my percent times 77 my whole. So 77 times the percent equals the part. I'm going to solve for my percent. So 14 divided by 77 is 0 0.18 repeating. Now, remember, that's in decimal form. So if I'm actually answering what is my percent, just slide it over twice. So that would be 18.18 repeating percent as that final answer. All right, so that's finding percents using equations. So that's one method. Now, let me show you another method. You can decide which one you prefer. So this one is using a proportion, okay? So remember, percent is out of 100. So in my proportion, I'm always going to have the number 100. And above it will be whatever percent. 
And then on the other side of the proportion is the part over the whole, okay? Some people remember this as is over of, because like I said before, is tips us off about the part, of tips us off about the whole. It gives away which is which, okay? So I'm going to set these up and show you how you would do this one. So this one we got 20%. So remember my percent always goes over 100. And this one, one reason people like this one better is you don't have to convert your percent to a decimal. You just leave it how it was, okay? And then it says of 25. So remember is over of, of goes on the bottom. It's the whole, okay? And then I would solve that, okay? Um, and just do our cross products and everything like that. So we get x equals 5. Um, 30 is 45% of what number? So 30 is, that means it's the part, so it's on top. 45% percent always goes over 100. So that puts my x down here. Okay. Same thing, you do your cross products. And it's all down. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward method. seem to make sense. What are you missing? Oh, it should have been 3,000. Yeah, so slide that over. So 66.6 .6 repeating. You notice these are the same problems, so we're getting the same answers. Um, and then finally, 14 is what percent of 75? So I'm looking for that percent, so my x is over 100. 14 is, so that's on top. 77 is the of, so that's on the bottom. Do it out. I get 18.18 repeating percent, okay? Now, the reason some people like this is because, you notice here especially, I didn't have to do anything to that answer, okay? The answer was the answer. Um, I didn't have to slide the decimal or anything like that. Same thing with when they give you the percent, that's exactly what you put in, okay? So that's one reason people like this, and proportions are very straightforward. It's easy to remember the is over the of, okay? Um, so those are your two methods. I would like you to practice both, so... On here, we got this 23% of what number is 75. Do this problem using both methods, using setting up the equation and using the proportion. Okay, pause it and hit play to check your answers. All right, so for this one, we got percent in decimal form, which is 0.23, of what number? So remember, of is the whole. Here's our little keywords down here. Um, so that means I'm looking for that. Equals 75. Okay, so to solve this, I need to do this to both sides. So x ends up equaling, let's see, about 326 if I round it off. Okay, all right, over here on the proportion method, you have your percent over 100 equals, remember it's is over of, so it is 75 will go up here, I'm looking for x. I got 7,500 equals 23x, and I would divide by 23. And you would get the exact same answer. Okay, so there's our two methods. Um, you can also use them interchangeably. Sometimes I like to do use this method when we're doing just these kind of basic kind of problems, but then I use a proportion if I'm doing a word problem. So you can also do that. You can use one or the other. You could just always use one. It's up to you which method you choose to use. All right, so choose one of the methods, set up your problem, and then get your answer. Um, hit play when you've done both of them to check your answers. All right, so let me set it up for both. So if I was going to do a proportion, I got my percent over 100. It says is, so remember is over of, so it's set up like that. If I was going to do it the other way, it'd be this times x equals 24, okay? Either way, you should end up with 25 as your answer. Okay, so if you didn't get 25, make sure you set it up correctly. Um, if you set it up correctly and you still didn't get 25, you made a calculation error. All right, the next one, we're looking for the percent for 100. 18 is of 48, so that goes on the bottom. And over here, we're looking for the percent, percent times the whole. So the whole number is 48x equals 18. 
So on this one, this would go straight to the answer, which is 37.5%. This one, you would have gotten x equals 0 0.375. Now don't forget, you got to slide it over twice to end up getting the correct percentage, okay? Because it gives it to you in decimal form. So if you're going to use this method, you got to remember that your percents are in decimal form, okay? And you got to convert it. All right, go ahead and pause and try these two and then hit play to check your work. All right, the proportion you should have set up like this. It says of 122, so that's on the bottom. The, um, oops, the equation would have been set up like this, okay? Either way, you would have gotten x equals 109.8. For the second one, you got 39 is... That's on top of 260. That's on the bottom. X over 100. Okay, so on this one, you would have gone straight to the answer of 15%. Over here, you would have had the whole number times the percent equals the part. And when you solved it, you would have gotten 0.15. And don't forget, you got to slide the decimal to end up with the correct percentage. Okay. All right, so now we're going to try them with word problems, okay? So up to you. You can use either method still. But the is and the of aren't quite as helpful now. You're more just going to have to think about the beginning. You know how we were thinking about what's the part, what's the whole. Same thing here. What's the part, what's the whole in the story that they're talking about, okay? So hit pause, try on your own, and hit play to see how you did. So it says the composition of the U.S. dollar bill is 75% cotton. So the percent, that really gives away, obviously, it's a percent. So if I was doing a proportion, I'd already have this set up. Um, if I'm doing the equation, I turn it to a decimal, okay? If a bill weighs three ounces, how much of it is cotton? So we know the total bill weighs three ounces. So that means that is the whole, okay? And over here, the whole number is multiplied by the percent. So I'm looking for the part, right? How much of it is cotton, the part that is cotton, okay? So that's what we're solving. If you do it out either way, you should end up with x equals 2.25 ounces of it is cotton okay so either way to set it up is fine um, and then make sure you're doing your workout correctly all right go ahead and try this one on your own and then hit play to check your work all right so we got a percent again so the percent is always over 100 and then she has 98 students how many students are in the seventh grade well the students she would have would be part of the seventh grade right and we don't know how many students are in the whole seventh grade Okay, so we're looking for that whole. Um, over here, I got my percentage times the whole, which we don't know, equals the part. Okay, so we do this out. Either way, you should end up, if you round it, about 158 students are in the seventh grade. I'm sure some of you are going, why am I getting part of a student a decimal number? But remember, this is about 62%. So that number is rounded. So that's why. This ends up a little bit off, but it's 158 students.